Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, we're here again with Dave Samuels, the founder of Corinthian Wealth Management. He's the chief investment officer. And quite frankly, he's, he's lucid. He can talk about finance that we can understand. Uh, so uh, we're back again here to talk about uh, another one of the uh, main uh, parts that people have to think about uh, during uh, wealth management planning, their own retirement planning. Uh, welcome back, Dave. Thank you. Good to be here. Dave, uh, good to see you again. And the um, the last video we did together on uh, on uh, uh, tax planning was very uh, in informative, I thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, today you 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 wanted to talk about the second pillar um, of financial planning, uh, estate planning. Yes. And here's a question for you that I've been mulling over. A lot of people don't think they have an estate because they don't have enough money saved up. And, and let's face it, we all know that in the United States today, there is kind of a crisis, I don't know what you call it, of people not having enough money to retire mm -hmm. or, or you know, retired the way they'd like, maybe is the answer. But do you need a certain amount of money to have an estate? What 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 constitutes an estate worth worth planning for? So John, first of all, every one of us has an estate. Think of your estate as who you are in your legacy. I mean everyone thinks of stocks, bonds, cash, bank accounts, brokerage accounts. That's true as part of your estate your auto, your, your, your cars, your home. So we all have our own, I'm gonna call it personal foundation. We all have an estate. And one critical function of estate planning is think of all you have, and in your mind it may not be much, how do you want it to go to your loved ones, your heirs, or the next generation? So simple planning can be, you know, I do the I love you thing, honey, I, my wife or whoever, I want you to get everything I own. That's simple planning and nothing wrong with that. And that's the way the laws are structured, that's pretty easy. When you start doing estate planning, say, but wait a minute, we own this nice house. When we pass on, we want our kids to get it, preferably tax-free if we can. That's another type of estate planning. Well, maybe you have IRAs in your account, uh, deductible IRAs and Roths. You want your heirs maybe to get those. Well, then there's a way to pass those out. That's all part of estate planning. And there's various documents and devices used to make this um, cost effective. Sure, and, and there's, uh, while well, most of us think of passing on our, our belongings to our children, uh, there's plenty of people who don't have children and plenty of people who have charities and special um, intentions, whatever they are, I mean, give their money to the church or something like that. This is, so estate planning really does affect everybody, no matter what your situation. Um, but I guess it gets complicated when you have children, or, or is that not the case? It, it, does it get more complicated with children and family? Um, it depends on how you do this, John. I'll give you a quick example. Um, so imagine husband and wife own a house, we'll call it here in California. 30 years ago, they paid 200,000 for their house. Now their house is worth 800,000 30 years later. So you can we say, wait a minute, we've made 800,000 bucks just living in the house and paying it off. When we, as a husband and wife pass on, the intention is often to pass on to their heirs as in their children. Well, one effective way to do this is the way the law works right now as we speak is they're gonna probably get what's called a step up in basis. What that means in English is that the basis in their home, they paid 200,000. That's their basis, that's the cost. But now the house is worth 800,000. So when they both pass on, their children will inherit their house at today's value, 800,000, but owe no taxes. You say, how can that be? Because the value steps up at the date of death. The date that second spouse passes on that's how the that's how the step up in basis works. So I'm being very simplistic, John. Very simplistic. But I mean that's one way. And the type of planning utilized 
to make that happen often is people go to an attorney in California anyways and consider doing a living trust. I'm not here promoting living trusts and we don't do them in our office because that's a legal matter and we're not attorneys. And that's one thing where an attorney discusses deeper of passing on your significantly appreciated assets to your heirs. It happened with stocks also. You might have your favorite stock. Maybe you're a big shareholder of, I'll pick on Apple. Well, we know what they've, they've done and often people will want to, shall we say, hold on and die with what they have in their estate. Well, if they're passing on to the next generation as in their children, it could potentially get that step up in basis as well because that is a capital asset. Now, Dave, so, you just gave you gave an example about uh, 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 a trust and, and, and lawyers. Um, and of course, our first video we did, uh, the last video we did was about taxes. And so I assume that you as a financial planner work with uh, or will work with my attorney or my tax ad, uh, accountant or, or something like that, work closely with them so we can make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah. And John, as you brought up, our two key critical advisors are often the tax preparer as in a CPA or an enrolled, enrolled agent and the estate planning attorney. That's very common. And we always get our client's blessing to go back and forth and exchange information. And that makes everything very often run a lot smoother because then we're all in communication and on the same page. Right, right. I think one of the important things is that if people don't do that kind of planning mm -hmm. and they die without a will, then the state and lawyers are going to get a lot of that money that would normally right. go to the air. So that it'd be a good enough reason uh, just to go uh, speak to you or to your attorney about coming up with a will or a living trust or what have you. But I want to circle back for, for a moment to something you said, because actually uh, we went through this uh, a, a couple of years ago on a, a condominium that my uh, mother-in-law owned. And in fact, uh, uh, they stepped up in value so that when it got sold, uh, basically there was no tax on it because we sold it almost immediately. So whatever the value was, uh, and then it got split among all the kids, they were able to get the, so in the case that you gave of a something that stepped up in value to 800000 that they only paid 200000 for, normally if they sold it in their lifetime, they would have to pay income tax on, forgetting about what the marital deductions were, $600,000. But in this particular case, since they held on to it and they were able to live in it, uh, mm -hmm. they got that entire value. And then when their kids got it, they got a quite, quite, much more additional money than had the parents sold it in the first place. So all these kind of things are the things that you can at least show that the world is strewn with these kind of things. And for instance, in the case of Apple and other stocks, in fact, if you didn't need to sell it for the value that you wanted to buy something with, and you were getting dividends on it, then if you had the luck of having the right stock and it was paying dividends, you take the dividends out and pay taxes on that, but then whoever's going to inherit that would have a step up in value. So it's not just a simple thing, well, oh, uh, uh, th this is just a difficult thing. If you don't deal with it, you're probably going to pass on a whole lot less money than yeah. if you had just spent a little time speaking to somebody like yourself. And a quick example, John, I'll take you back. So you mentioned doing no planning at all. Well, worst case scenario, or one of the worst cases, you may end up in what's called probate. And what happens is the probate court says, hmm, the person who just passed away had no plan. We're going to guess and assume they wanted this. We call that the government default plan. There's a plan for you. It's just, do you want to do it or have another entity do it for you? So again, probate, as you know, it can be very timely, excuse me, um, take a lot of time cost a significant amount of money and they're doing the planning for you they're assuming things that may or may not be accurate on how the money is to be dispersed so again art back to your commentary yes planning and putting everything in writing and document it is critical because this is your legacy this is your estate and as your estate grows and as we age it becomes more important to us what it means you're leaving who you are and what you're about to the next generation so you so, also said about uh, tax planning that uh, you're even going into high schools now to to uh, give the basics to young kids 
so that as they get out in the world that they uh, maybe, you know, they just put a little bit of money away and, uh, and things like that and get ready at an early age and get into proper habits. When should people really start uh, uh, thinking about estate planning in your view? Um, most people don't think about it till they're in their um, getting within maybe 10 years of retirement. The reason being is, remember, we all think we're immortal when we're in our 40s and maybe even our early 50s. We see other people passing on or getting sick, but not us. <clears throat> so it, it's it, before that age, we encourage it. But here's some estate planning that we do early on. When you have an IRA, who is your beneficiary? If you're you know, married, it's usually your spouse. That's a good thing because we encourage that you want a person to be a beneficiary versus an entity as in a trust or something else. That can have better advantages to you down the road. So basic who is benefits from your, frankly, your demise, life insurance. If you have life insurance and if you pass on, you die, who gets the money? Who is the beneficiary? Those things are what's called direct or contractual beneficiaries. And your attorney is going to want to know that regarding your living trust. But you don't put an IRA in a living trust. You don't put your basic life insurance in your living trust. You don't have to because they have designated named beneficiaries. So going back to what you mentioned, Art, that's a form of early estate planning, making sure your beneficiaries are accurate and correct, and they should be reviewed. Whoever you wanted to benefit maybe 15 years ago might have changed due to death, divorce, or other circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. A probate is uh, notorious uh, for uh, doing exactly what you didn't want with your money <laughs> and costing costing a lot of money to, to get it done. I guess the money goes to the courts and the lawyers. Yes. And yeah. they've, got, they've got their rules, which have nothing to do with whatever you want, really wanted to do with your money. Um, have you heard of, uh, there was a, a long time ago, there was a book that, and I don't remember the name of it exactly, but it was essentially uh, Die Broke. Uh, spend all your money now and die broke. And the idea was uh, your kids don't need the money. They'll make their own way in the world. What you should do is plan on spending every dime you have so that on the day you die, you are, you know, in, in debt by only a dollar, but you don't have any money left to spend. And I thought, as I read that book years ago, I thought to myself, well, that's nice if you knew when you were going to die. Right. <laughs> you know, it's which nobody does. Well, um, unless, unless you, you have... decide that you'll die the day you run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, there is, John, a way to do that. We don't recommend it um, for a number of reasons why people can guess. Most people want to pass something on. But when you say die broke, there are uh, investments that are actually insurance products out there called annuities. And what some people have been known to do is they'll take and drop their life savings in their annuity. And then the annuity will give them a monthly benefit, a monthly payout every single month until the day they die. That's called a straight life annuity. That's called annuitization. As you can imagine, it's not very common. It's actually frowned upon. However, where those are used is I was in a situation where someone knew they were passing on. This guy had a girlfriend and everyone knew, including her, she was not good with money. I said, how's this, honey? We're going to set you up with an income of X amount for the rest of your life. The day you die, the money's gone and she had no one to leave it to, she said, great. In that rare situation, leaving, you know, your last, spending your last dime on your last day, okay. But as a general rule, it's something that, it's done, but not very common. So what else do we need to know about estate planning? Well, I mean, as we open up in the beginning, it's, Everyone has an estate, and certain things are more advantageous inside the estate when you pass on than others. So, for example, anything that's tax deferred, as in an IRA or an annuity, is going to be less desirable for your beneficiaries. Think about this. You're a beneficiary. You want that house that got that step up in basis. You want that stock portfolio that stepped up from very low to very high, a big step up in basis. That's wonderful to pass on. It's great for a beneficiary. 
But if you have that IRA, well, that beneficiary is forced to take out distributions. And they may be forced to take them out within a relatively short period of time with a new law, maybe 10 years. So is that really advent? Is Look, free money is better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But the free money doesn't seem so free when you have a tax bill attached to it. Anything that's an IRA or tax deferred is always going to trigger something in taxes to someone. So just the fact you die, your tax bill does not die with you. Interesting. Interesting way to look at it. Um, and of course, like all finances, always what I call the balancing act between doing it this way or doing it that way. And um, and that's why we need a good certified financial planner to help us through that minefield uh, of the choices we have. Right. And one last quick bit of estate planning, uh, John, is that there's different parts to estate planning. And I'm, gonna, I'm lumping this in, I'm probably maybe stretching a bit, but two things, people say, okay, now I admit I'm not gonna live forever. What's gonna happen if I get really sick or disabled and I can't make my own medical decisions? Who's gonna make them for me? Well, you at this stage and I and all of us have the ability to say, I want so-and-so to make those choices for me. That's a living document called a durable power of attorney for healthcare, you can get that. What about your finances? Hey, I've worked my tail off. I've got a nice portfolio, IRAs, whatever you have. But now you get to the point where say, so you know, you're not able to, or maybe even it's a doctor signs off saying, you are not going to be making any more. My mother's like that. She can't be making decisions. So therefore, others step in, as in her three children, to make those choices for her financially and for medical. That's a durable power of finances. And these things are critical legal documents that we recommend that you always have on file so at least we know what your intentions and wishes are at that time. All good information, all good thank information. You. So um, thank you for all of this. And of uh, next time we'll talk about another pillar of financial planning. Um, do you know which one we wanna talk about? Well, I think we brought, we're talking about, we're calling it cash flow and retirement planning. We, kind of, we combine them. Boy, that sounds important, particularly yeah. as you get older. Yeah, really, you don't is. have a lot of cash flow. <laughs> yeah, there, and, we, and it hurts more too when you get older. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I look forward to that discussion. Thanks. Thanks so much, Dave. Appreciate it. I look forward to being back. Okay. Bye bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.